So uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining us uh, for this uh, session. I hope uh, it's going to be an interesting one for the people who are uh, watching the conference. I uh, I will stay without uh, without camera because uh, apparently it's better this uh, this way. I'm very sorry for this. Um, so uh, today uh, we are here to discuss about uh, InnoSub projects, uh, Horizon 2020 projects, and the opportunities that this kind of projects offer to uh, SMEs, and I'm uh, very happy to uh, have a uh, uh, very distinguished uh, uh, list of uh, panelists uh, here today, uh, and um, hopefully, as I said, we will have an interesting uh, discussion. Um, let me first uh, give the floor to everybody here to present uh, themselves, uh, not uh, before mentioning uh, one thing. Um, uh, Daniel will have to leave in about an hour, so uh, most of the questions that I uh, prepared uh, for our discussion for Daniel will be, um, uh, let's say, put in, in the first part of the uh, uh, conference of the discussion, and then uh, Daniel uh, will have to, to leave. Uh, so uh, let's let's start uh, with with a short presentation from uh, everybody here in the panel, um, and um, the first uh, that I invite uh, is uh, Clemence. Clemence, please, uh, if you can present yourself. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much to Cluj IT and Andre for uh, inviting me for this uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, panel discussion. So my name is Clémence Lecorf. Uh, I'm a European project manager in Polmer Méditerranée, uh, which is an innovation uh, cluster located in south of France. Uh, in Palmyre Mediterranean, uh, we are. Uh, our aim is to uh, foster innovation in the maritime sectors, and for that, uh, we gather uh, uh, actors from uh, uh, such as SMEs, uh, large companies, but also research centers and other uh, organizations from uh, in the ecosystem that are working. Um, uh, in the maritime field. Uh, I am also a uh, coordinator of the Galatea project, uh, which is an um, InnoSup uh, 01 pro project uh, funded by the European Union and the uh, uh, Horizon 2020 program of the European Commission. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, let's move on, and um, I invite uh, Melanie to do a short presentation as well. Melanie, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Andre. Uh, so I'm Melanie Pelen, and I'm the leader of Digisec project at Cap Digital. Um, Cap Digital is the French hub for digital and ecological ecological transformation. And it's also the biggest cluster in Europe uh, with more than 1,000 members. It was created uh, 15 years ago with offices in Paris and Lille. And our mission is to address digital innovation in six sectors. Sustainability, health, technologies, data, artificial intelligence, edtech and human resources, retail, cultural and creative industries. So we provide our members with support through a wide range of services, uh, support in research and innovation, startups acceleration, open innovation programs, training and matchmaking opportunities. Um, since 2028, we have been coordinating and participating in more than 40 European projects. And thanks to this uh, expertise and our extensive network in Europe, we took the lead of the 2020 DGCF project that started in uh, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, uh, let's move on. And uh, next, uh, Tade. Tade, please. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, hear you perfectly. Yeah. Hi, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like also to congratulate you, Andre, on the organization of uh, this great event. Uh, you did a good job, and it's uh, really a pleasure for me to be here in this interesting panel uh, in nice company. Uh, briefly, to introduce myself, uh, I am Teddy Bouchard 
coordinator of the European Industry Project in the uh, I'm working in the aerospace valley. And master for the aeronautic space and aerospace and aerospace industry. Uh, originally from Canada and right now in Toulouse, France, and I lived since 2014. Uh, so, at time actually I studied uh, and work in international relations for the space sector. And today I'm actually glad to cooperate in the wonderful project that Penn Union is. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Tade, and uh, thank you also for the uh, appreciations. Um, and last but not least, uh, uh, Daniel, please introduce yourself. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so first of all, let me thank you, uh, Andre, uh, as well for organizing this very nice event. And of course, I'm honored to be on such a high level uh, panel. Um, so um, some words about what we're doing. So now it's a little bit a special period because we are we are ending. So I'm from the executive agency uh, for uh, SMEs and the EIC, the European Innovation Council. So this agency has been uh, created on the 1st of April with a short name, which is ASMEA. Um, and uh, I'm now ending the uh, work program from INUSUP. So we have now finalized the last evaluation uh, and we are now working on what we call the INUSUP legacy, uh, knowing that our projects will be lasting until uh, 2024. And I'm also now initiating the new actions coming from the uh, European Innovation Ecosystems part from the uh, European Innovation Council. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Daniel. And um, I, I propose we, we start with you, as I said. I know that you are a bit under uh, time uh, uh, pressure. Uh, so I, I have uh, some questions uh, that I prepared for you. And um, the first one that I uh, want to ask is, uh, why is uh, innovation uh, so important for the European economy? And um, further, uh, going further on, uh, what is the role of the European Innovation Council and the SME Executive Agency in, in all these efforts that the uh, European Union is putting out there? So, Daniel, please. Thank you, André. I mean, innovation obviously is important for many reasons. Uh, I would say, of course, that first of all, behind the innovation, there's, of course, the growth and the jobs. I think that's probably the most important. But behind this, there is also the fact of uh, meeting uh, societal needs, which is, I would say, at least as important uh, as the growth component. And, uh, and probably the interpretation of growth may also evolve in time in the next years, especially with the new generations. And um, coming back to the EIC, I mean, basically, uh, Probably many of you know that the EIC has a big component where we are supporting innovative SMEs uh, via different instruments. So basically what we're doing in the EIC is that we are creating a kind of uh, high level playground for our SMEs. Um, of course, if we want to be successful in a global economy, we have to play together at a meaningful level. And uh, of course, from the Brussels perspectives, uh, we think that the, the right level for working together is Europe and beyond, knowing especially the Horizon Europe countries and uh, let's say the member states and the associated countries. So we need a critical mass of actors for making sure that we can make the best out of it. So that's precisely the role of the EIC. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. And, um... Yes, uh, you have uh, you have mentioned that uh, innovation is supported uh, through through the agency, uh, and and we know that we know that because uh, everybody here uh, uh, in this panel is involved in such uh, projects that are supported uh, through Horizon 2020 uh, program, and um, I, I propose now to jump uh, quickly uh, to. Uh, uh, short presentations of these uh, three projects that are uh, represented here in the panel and. Um, um, I will start again with uh, Clemence, if you don't mind, Clemence, if you want to tell us a little bit about uh, Galatea, uh, what are the objectives, uh, uh, where, where do you see this project contributing the most uh, in, in the European context? Um, so Galatea, uh, as uh, I told you before, is a European uh, funding project. Uh, whose aim is to uh, integrate, 
to create new uh, value chain, new industrial value chain uh, by the integration of uh, digital uh, technologies and aerospatial uh, technologies within uh, four key domains of the maritime sectors sector, which are uh, smart power, uh, smart ship, smart shipyard, and maritime surveillance. Uh, for that, uh, what we have uh, wanted to do is to gather um, a consortium of uh, eight partners uh, that are in five European countries, uh, in Romania, in France, in Spain, in Poland and in Greece. Uh, and all of these partners are clusters that are working uh, either in the maritime sector, in the aerospatial sector or in the digital sector. And also, uh, we have one uh, research and uh, technology organization in Spain, which is specialized in, uh, digital, in the digital sector. Um, so, um, uh, Galatea uh, has started last year in June 2020 and will end uh, in November 2022. Uh, and we have uh, found this project in three phases. Uh, and uh, all these phases are um, uh, in the aim of supporting uh, innovation in SMEs. Uh, the first phase that uh, is now done was uh, the identification of uh, end user challenges. Um, during a few months, we have been uh, in, in touch with uh, end users that were on our territories in the five countries that I, I mentioned, and we have uh, uh, talk to them to, to see uh, and identify what are their need, needs and what, uh, what uh, do they, uh, what, what are the, the problems and the solutions they have and the solutions they, they want. Uh, we have um, identified 22 challenges out of this, all in the maritime sectors and in the four domains I, I mentioned. Um, and uh, we have asked, we have uh, proposed these challenges to uh, SMEs that are on our territories. Um, then we have organized uh, um, um, uh, some events uh, that uh, aim to uh, to uh, favor uh, the emergence of ideas and the emergence of projects. Uh, we have organized uh, innovation clubs. Uh, that, that were uh, small events in which SMEs were invited and were asked to, uh, to, to talk together on the different challenges that we identified and to try to uh, brainstorm on uh, the project and on the ideas that could solve these challenges. And right after this Innovation Club sessions, we have organized some B2B session in which the SMEs, but also other uh, actors, uh, had the, the chance to, to talk uh, in, in one to one uh, to um, consolidate the, their partnerships and, uh, if possible, um, propose a, a project and a consortium for the call for projects that we have launched in the third phase. So the third phase is the innovation support mechanism. It's a little bit the, the, the core activity. Well, it's the core activity of the project. Uh, it's the launch of uh, an open uh, an open call of uh, open calls, an open call for voucher and an open call for services. The call for voucher uh, provide to SMEs some direct fundings up to sixty thousand euro, and the call for services provide some coaching services that are. Um, done by the cluster partners, uh, which are uh, skilled and experienced in the innovation uh, activities. Uh, and the aim is to help and support the SMEs in this, the, de the development of these uh, activities. Um, uh, we have uh, closed the first call for voucher and services at the end of March. And we have just announced the result last, uh, last week. Uh, so for this first call uh, for vouchers, uh, we are um, funding 14 projects and 25 SMEs, um, and we and this uh, project will start uh, within uh, one or one month and a half in order to uh, implement the solution that they propose uh, to the challenges uh, that we have identified in the maritime sectors. Um, we are. We will uh, offer. Uh, we will uh, launch a new call uh, for voucher and new, new call for services uh, in September, with a uh, cut-off date in uh, November. 
So if uh, there is some SMEs here uh, in the in the attendance that uh, would like to um, to know more about these opportunities, please uh, stay tuned on our website or uh, social media uh, to see how how you could uh, get part of this uh, of this of the Galatea project and. Uh, um, and join us uh, on that uh, opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Clemence, uh, for the very comprehensive, I would say, uh, presentation about the Galatea projects, uh, project. Of course, I know uh, many of the details that you have uh, exposed here uh, in, in this discussion because uh, Cluj IT is part of the co project consortium. And uh, because I wanted to gain uh, some time back uh, with our uh, first delay, our delay, uh, I jumped some of the, let's say, uh, things that I wanted to mention at the beginning. But very briefly, I want to say that uh, this is uh, broadcasted over uh, uh, social media channels as well. And um, uh, it reaches, I believe, uh, quite a number of uh, people and uh, organizations. So everybody who's interested in following up in, uh, on this discussion on what will be was said and will be said uh, in this panel, please contact us and we will uh, gladly put you uh, uh, in contact with the relevant organizations, depending on your interest. So um, now I will go to uh, Melanie. Melanie is uh, leading uh, another InnoSoup uh, project uh, called DigiCirc. Uh, this is a project that I don't know uh, a lot about, just what I've uh, seen on the uh, internet because we are not part of it. So uh, Melanie, please. Yes, so um, to introduce DigiCirc, uh, I would like to give you an example of solutions uh, led by SMEs uh, we are supporting. This example is a, a project led by two SMEs who developed a solution uh, that solves the problem of uh, reducing plastic bottles of water. So as I'm talking to you, you, you probably have a plastic bottle in your hand or, or near you. Uh, nearly a million plastic water bottles are sold every minute in the world. This is a, a huge issue for human health and for the environment. And we are supporting those two companies who's going to provide safe and clean public stations for water refilled in outdoor spaces, free of charge, and easy to geolocalize with an application. So no need for single-use pl plastic bottles of water. It solves the problem for citizens who will have access to clean drinking water everywhere and provide municipalities with a, a solution against uh, plastic pollution. So this is a kind of solution having a positive impact on the environment and using digital tool we are supporting. So how do we do that? Let me give you a couple of facts. So the first fact is that uh, we launch open calls for SMEs and our experts uh, select the one that have the higher potential. The second fact is that once selected, we provide those SMEs with support in the development of the solution through uh, an intensive acceleration program and funding. The companies I've talked to you a moment ago went through that process. So at the end of the acceleration program, uh, the SMEs will have a, a solid business plan and a validated prototype. Thus, we, we help them to improve their innovation faster and limit the risk for potential investors. So now let me tell you more about uh, DigiCirc. In a couple of words, DigiCirc stands for Digital and Circular Economy. Our goal is to promote digital innovations for the circular economy in three sectors. Number one, circular cities. Number two, blue economy. And number three, bioeconomy. To do so, we rely on three activities. The first activity is to build and animate a European ecosystem of stakeholders. This includes clusters, public entities, SMEs, investors, research organizations, and large companies 
from across Europe and from different sectors. The second activities is to create digital tools for the benefit of our consortia. We are talking here about four tools to support the demonstration of the solutions. And lastly, we manage the open calls and accelerator programs. Basically, we will launch three open calls, one per sector, to select consortia that will integrate one of our acceleration programs. So it means that we will run uh, three acceleration programs. To make it work, we also rely on the expertise of our 11 partners from across Europe. Uh, first, we have three clusters. Each of them uh, lead one of the DGSIC domain. So Cap Digital for the Circular Cities domain, Digipolis for the bioeconomy, and CTN, Marine Technology Center, for the blue economy. We also have two companies in charge of developing the project digital tools, Praxis and CLMS, two business accelerator experts, F6S and Officine Innovazione, one expert in systemic design, Politecnico di Torino, a venture capital firm, Fast Track, a law firm, Arthur Segal, and a sustainability consultant company, Inspiring Culture Association. DigiCert is planned to last 32 months with a dedicated budget of 5 million, all funded by the European Commission through the H2020 Energy Program. And on this budget, 2.4 million is dedicated to SMEs. So, what as an SME will get from this project? Um, raising money and getting support for scaling are major, major challenges for, for the SMEs. And we fill that gap by betting, training, mentoring, and funding them. Thus, we, pro we provide them with an accelerated channel for launching concrete digital solutions to the market. And we also limit the risk for potential investors as we pick for them good business solutions. If you'd like to know more about DigiCirc and meet the companies we are accelerating, I invite you to, to visit us or, or contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, again, a very uh, concise but comprehensive uh, presentation of the project and the opportunities that it brings to uh, SMEs in various uh, sectors. Um, my colleagues are making sure that in the chat uh, you have the links uh, to the uh, project. Uh, you can check this out uh, if you want. And uh, since we're talking about the chat, this is something else that I wanted to say at the very beginning of, uh, of our panel. If you have questions um, in, from the audience, please uh, just drop them here and uh, we will uh, pick them up and address, uh, address this with the, with the panelists. So I will now move on uh, to, uh, to Tade. Uh, to talk about the UFO project. This is again a project that we know very well because uh, we are involved in it. But uh, for our audience, uh, Tade, please uh, let us know more about uh, this project. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, well, so in one sentence, uh, the project UFO uh, is also a project in a cascade funding scheme. Uh, where we actually want to support the creation of faster the value change of six emerging with the use of the small sat, drones, and high altitude platform systems. Uh, the high altitude platform systems, for exactly what this is, uh, it is actually a platform that can go 25 and 40 kilometers above Earth. Uh, it does as a, as a balloon for the met meteorological. Uh, so with those three, what we call small flying objects, we want to foster the six targeted emerging industries. So more the project UFO is a two years, years and a half project and launched in March 2020. So one year, uh, it regroup partners that including Cluj IT in Romania, uh, but we are also partnering with the ICT cloud in Bulgaria. 
Coralia in Greece, Knowledge Transfer Network here in Southeast in the UK, in France, Minalogique, Finance Innovation, and the Climate Kick that is a partner in the project. So, UFO is a collaboration uh, of two or more SMEs for the project to innovative product or solution that is integrating a new embedded technologies in a small object. The small flying objects are, of course, small sat, drones, and high altitude platform systems. So, as mentioned before, we have targeted six emerging and do so are the mobility, the blue, the climate, the environment, and the finance and insurance industries, and the creative industries. The project, as it has been explained to you, how in a sub project work is the same for UFO. And we can support by financing up to 60,000 euros per SMEs. Uh, any kind of uh, or feasibility studies that are actually combining these new embedded technologies uh, and the small flying object that aims to foster, of course, the value change of this. Yeah. In total, we have a three million euros dedicated to support your financial. financial well, three million euros are dedicated to finance your project. This was a project and the aim of UFO. So, for more information, of course, I encourage you to visit our website, ufoproject.eu. We have many activities that will come in the coming weeks. We are preparing our second open call that will be launched in the coming days, well, coming week mostly. We are supported by a match that will. And here, of course, you are invited to participate in those kind of events. You will be able to meet other SMEs, right. try to find any relevant partners to contribute to the emerging right. industries. So a lot of activities of UFO are coming. Uh, please do not hesitate to follow our LinkedIn, LinkedIn page or even to contact me for myself. Or if you have some specific questions right. now, it will be a pleasure to answer you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Tade. So indeed, uh, a call that is coming up not uh, very far from uh, from uh, today. So those who are interested in more details, uh, please let us know, and uh, we will be happy to provide any uh, uh, answer that we can to, to your questions. Uh, so I will now move quickly to Daniel, because uh, as I said, time is limited in his case. Uh, he will be here for another approximately 20 something minutes. And uh, Daniel, I have uh, some uh, questions prepared for you, uh, and I will I will start with the with the fir first one. Uh, the European economy relies to a great extent on the SMEs, as we all know uh, very much. Some say is that uh, some even say that SMEs are the backbone of the European economy. Um, they are also vital to the global performance of the EU and the associated uh, countries. Uh, what are the main uh, instruments uh, that the European Innovation Council and the SME Executive Agency are putting together? Um, and they are, do they include or not um, uh, the SMEs in, in their focus? And last but not least, uh, also a question that um, is uh, a curiosity of mine. Uh, Will there be another InnoSoup, uh, let's say, sequence in the Horizon uh, Europe uh, program? Okay, thanks a lot, Andre. So, I mean, um, uh, first of all, I would say now that with the new ACE Mayor, there there are really there is one block which is targeting the SMEs directly, uh, and for this we have instruments that probably you know for the uh, SME side, which is on one hand the Pathfinder, which is really for deep tech. Then we have the transition for new uh, new appliances. And the last one is the accelerator, which is the success of the SM instrument. And I have to highlight as well that um, for this, the, all these uh, beneficiaries are backed by our uh, business acceleration services, which in somehow are quite similar to what happens in our InnoSub1 projects. Uh, so this is for the SME side. So it's a, it's a really a, a big scale now because this is the result of two years of piloting of these uh, initiatives. 
And then you have another pillar, uh, which is extremely rich, which is more targeting this time uh, intermediaries, uh, stakeholders. So there I would say uh, a very important part is the uh, European innovation ecosystem uh, element of the EIC. Um, and there we are aiming at connecting in a structured way all the stakeholders uh, via uh, what we call the EIC forum, which should, should be launched in the course of the year uh, with different areas of discussion, one for more for member states and the other one more for, for, for the players on the ground. And I have to add to this that we're also dealing with the COSME program, so we're also very close to initiatives of the Commission which are supporting the competitiveness of SMEs. And uh, this is really a novelty. We're also covering aspects related to standardization. And probably you know that there's a strong link between innovation and standardization. So this is a, a very good thing to have this also under the, the same umbrella. And to end with, we're also covering uh, consumer rights. And as you can guess, this is an important dimension also for the business side uh, because they uh, are also the players of the protection of the consumers. So I would say, all in all, this is a, a super fledged, fully fledged organization covering a very vast area of activities. Um, and uh, for uh, answering your question about the successor of InnoSup, I would say there isn't a formal successor of InnoSup as such. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in the work program about the European innovation ecosystems, there are many actions which resemble to what we have had in InnoSup. I would say more the um, part of the program which relates to intermediaries more than the ones which are relating to SMEs. Um, there, there will be quite interesting calls for you as well. And we are, uh, as the title says, working a lot in connecting the players of uh, innovation support ecosystems. Uh, so this is on one hand done at European level. So this is, uh, I would say, the, the outcome should be very similar to what's uh, happening within the InnoSup 1 projects, which are present today. But we will also uh, encourage the local players to better work together means that we will set a number of conditions also for projects which are aiming at supporting these organization to be better performing. Um, and this will require some, uh, some, let's say, eligibility rules which are pushing a lot the local players to play together. And uh, I would end by mentioning the so-called I3 initiative. Uh, which is uh, basically uh, worth as much as the European innovation ecosystem part. This is something totally new. Uh, we, I guess we will be launching the first call in October this year. And uh, this I3 stands for Interregional Innovation Investments. And there we will have a very similar approach to uh, what we have in InnoSub 1, meaning this will be the part in which we will be able to provide some cascade founding. So this is for giving you an overview in a nutshell. I could spend hours on this, but I guess uh, you're quite busy as well. Uh, so uh, this is for the first for, for, for this question, André. I hope it was complete enough. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So very interesting information indeed. Uh, there is not going to be, as, a, as far as I understand, a, a successor, uh, a proper successor of uh, InnoSoup uh, as it is now. Uh, but there are other, um, let's say, instruments that are put together uh, in Horizon uh, Europe uh, that resemble to InnoSoup. And uh, all the knowledge that uh, has been gained uh, with this project uh, that are now uh, uh, currently in implementation uh, could be valorized uh, in the next uh, uh, calls that uh, are prepared by the European Commission. That is uh, fantastic news otherwise, uh, because it was personally, uh, I would say, um, I have to say a concern that all this um, knowledge that has been accumulated uh, and all, all this groundwork that uh, especially cluster organizations are doing and uh, um, uh, in, in their respective countries uh, will be somehow uh, uh, lost. But uh, from what you're saying, this is very encouraging uh, news, Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will go back to, to, uh, to InnoSoup now. Uh, I have another question uh, prepared for you. Uh, from your position, uh, you have access to aggregated uh, data. Um, we would be very uh, interested and curious to, to see the impact that uh, the InnoSoup program had so far on the innovation uh, ecosystem in Europe. So if you can give us some 
uh, statistics, some data, and also maybe some uh, interesting uh, um, examples or use cases that you know of that have been funded or supported uh, through the InnoSU program. Okay, thank you, uh, Andre. So, uh, I mean, I won't go now into detailed stats. Um, let me just say one thing up front. Uh, what is uh, very useful is uh, the so-called data hubs. So if you go on the ASMEA website, you will find these data hubs. Um, there we are uh, displaying all the projects and you can really figure out the, the, the stats uh, in a very easy, easy filtering process. Uh, I have just to uh, apologize because the, the data is now a little bit outdated, so we'll do our best, especially for you, dear uh, uh, audience. Uh, we will make our best for making this up to date um, in the coming weeks. But this is really a very good entry point for you if you want to have stats, uh, for instance, per, per topics or per countries, etc. So it's a it's very easy to use a tool. Uh, maybe some stats about project implementation. So now we have finalized uh, 91 projects since, since 2014, and there are about 140 to run. And uh, we are now in the process of uh, finalizing some new projects which are coming from the EIC side, uh, from the enhanced EIC pilot. Uh, maybe one interesting uh, statistic, um, our uh, friends, uh, Mélanie, Clément, saint they they know this from uh, last year. Every year we are making an update about all the figures coming from InnoSoup 1. Uh, I wanted to emphasize the fact that InnoSoup 1, even though being a flagship of the InnoSoup, is not the only InnoSoup initiatives, knowing that we have really plenty of these. Um, so, uh, so I would say that uh, if in June, uh, this, uh, in June last year, we've had uh, evidence of having supported 2,600 uh, companies, SMEs, via the Cascade founding from InnoSoup 1. Uh, my estimates would be that today we are at least with uh, 3,000 SMEs, knowing that we have also in other, other initiatives where we are um, uh, supporting uh, SMEs via Cascade founding in other areas, like, for instance, workplace innovation, just for giving you an example. And um, and uh, I really wanted to, to to highlight now more than stats, also highlight some uh, results because we are now getting towards the end of the program. As I said, it's still for the upcoming three years. Um, nevertheless, we are now working in ASMEA for providing more visibility to the results. And uh, I wanted to mention here a couple of them because I think they're highly relevant to you. And uh, you will have a great pleasure for reading the first one, even to start with this weekend, because you won't be able to be uh, to wait for this. It is a very good study about the effectiveness of innovation support, which has been undertaking, undertaken in the last two years. It has just been released very recently, and I'm sending you the link to the study in, um, in the chat box, if this is working. No, it is not, but I, I will provide it later to you. But this is really a very good study, which is highly relevant for you, because you can also use it uh, when you are talking with your regional authorities, because many of these information can be translated to your situation. Um, and then we also uh, making a, quite an extensive work on the results of NSUP 5, which is the peer learning of innovation agencies. But this is also relevant for any player of uh, innovation support. Uh, so basically, we are translating the results of the 70 projects into a handbook for innovation agencies, which is also relevant for clusters, of course. Uh, so this should be released quite soon. Uh, and we also have a, a, an action which is called InnoSub6 about the use, the experimentation of use of randomized control trials in innovation support. And there we have also put in place a dissemination plan. So uh, this can be interesting for you. We are. We should be publishing probably before the uh, uh, the end of this uh, semester a study about um, uh, SME segmentation. This is also uh, it seems to be a little bit complex, but basically just to know which are the methods which can be used for better targeting SMEs in the area of innovation support. Um, and we also are working on a paper uh, which is just putting together the, the actions of InnoSup, which uh, relates to uh, blockchain actions, meaning how, to, how we support SMEs in uh, the acquisition or the better use of uh, blockchains. 
so um, I think in a nutshell, uh, I'm, I'm giving you now uh, lots of readings for the coming months, Andre. Indeed, uh, Daniel, a lot of uh, weekend reading that you recommended. Um, and uh, we will uh, take you up on that uh, and we will come back to you and uh, send us all the links and the resources that you have mentioned that I think they are important, especially for uh, uh, organizations like ours, uh, clusters and polls who are represented here. Uh, we want to know, of course, uh, how uh, um, what we are think impacts uh, overall, let's say, the European uh, Union. Uh, each of us contributes a little bit, uh, bit by bit to this. And uh, you, from your position, you are uh, able to aggregate this data and present it in a nice manner so that uh, everybody understands that we really have an uh, impact uh, together. And that's uh, that's important. It's so very important. You have, you have the, I mean, we are consolidating, but you're doing the work. So you have the impact alongside with us, Andre. I think we we work together. I, it, it's uh, it's a mutual uh, uh, relationship uh, that uh, um, hopefully will work better and better uh, because uh, indeed uh, I believe strongly in this that uh, the SMEs need a lot of support uh, in innovation in uh, uh, what they uh, are trying to do uh, a lot more than uh, large companies who have uh, different uh, uh, resources. They have access to a lot more resources than the SMEs. And uh, your uh, work is absolutely uh, fantastic. So uh, before you go, uh, Daniel, I have a, a general question to you and relates again to, to the uh, uh, SMEs and to innovation. Uh, what do you see as the most important barrier for uh, innovation happening um, uh, more consistently in SME environment? And uh, what can be done to address this uh, from your point of view? Well, I mean, uh, there, there's really a, there are a number of barriers. Uh, I, I wouldn't like not to, to take the challenge of listing them all. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I have the feeling that in many cases, a big uh, barrier today is skills. Uh, of course, the, the barriers about access to finance has been mentioned several times, but I have the feeling that the situation has become slightly better uh, compared to the previous years. Um, and I would say, uh, as a good remedy uh, against all of this, whatever the situation, it is really uh, that uh, the SMEs are working on a sustainab sustainability. So sustainability, of course, for their business, also, of course, for uh, our priorities, which are now, um, uh, let's say, put in stone within the European Green Deal. Um, uh, but what is really important is that we are, I mean, uh, in the line with this, it is, of course, to have a strong market orientation. Uh, we are very good in science, but we are very bad in translating it. So this is really uh, for, for us a top priority. And this is precisely what you're doing, colleagues, in, in sub one And uh, many thanks for, for this. But I would say what is very important, and this is also uh, one of the results of the Inusup actions, it is that we are making sure that the companies are networking together. The peer-to-peer -peer, uh, learning approach has a really very strong effect. And I think that what is done in Inusup 1 is really uh, uh, an exemplarity in the sense that we are really connecting the, the businesses together. And for having myself led several delegations towards uh, uh, investors, I have to say that uh, sometimes it happens also that the, the, the companies which are part of the projects start to do business uh, uh, among themselves. So um, uh, that's really a great opportunity for them. And uh, I'm a big fan of both InnoSoup1 and of course the Cascade founding scheme. Uh, so I think with this, we are really providing excellent uh, solutions to our SMEs. Um, and um, maybe I would like to mention this today. Uh, we are also um, promoting good examples of success. Of course, not only the success stories in the Sup One, which for me I think are absolutely great. You cannot imagine the the impact we have with a, a cascading grants, uh, sometimes lower than 60k. The impact on the SMEs is really great, and we have seen many examples. I'm not saying it's only because they participated in the Sup One but where in which the projects uh, uh, really, uh, the, the SMEs uh, then um, found really lo lots of equity uh, for their business. So it's really uh, an amazing result. Back to the exemplar, like, exemplar, exemplar, 
exemplarity it is that we are uh, having in the EIC uh, prices. Uh, so this is now since uh, several years, but this could be interesting for your SMEs. Um, uh, we have four categories of prices, which are all four, four of them open for the moment. Uh, so there is one price for iCapital. This is more addressing to your uh, cities around in which we are promoting the best innovative uh, capital for SMEs. So this is really what the cities are organizing in terms of innovation support. Then we have one which is related to um, uh, women uh, um, tech entrepreneurs. Uh, so this is also a, a very successful uh, operation. So in case you have some uh, projects which are led by women, uh, um, this is a very interesting price. Then we have one about um, innovation procurement. Um, where we are, and it's also, by the way, addressing to private procurers, but of course, we are essentially thinking about public procurers, where we are um, pushing for procurers to be buying more innovative, knowing that it entails a number of risks as well. Um, and there is a last uh, prize, um, which is the social innovation competition. And this is coming back to what I said at the beginning, um, the different models of growth are also evolving. This is why the social innovation uh, competition is quite meaningful to us as well. Interesting uh, uh, information once again, uh, Daniel. Uh, of course, many of no us know about this, uh, including the AIC prizes, uh, but it's, it's good that you um, repeat this kind of information because uh, this way the information gets to be known by uh, more and more uh, people, more and more organizations. And you mentioned something very important uh, from our perspective as well, as well and that's uh, networking and uh, uh, business relationships that are uh, born uh, through uh, this kind of uh, approach like the InnoSoup uh, is uh, proposing. And that's indeed something that I see um, with a lot of value for SMEs, because once again, they are lacking uh, the resources maybe to uh, to go abroad, to be present uh, all the time in, uh, in fairs, um, in um, uh, business trips, uh, and such projects uh, give them the uh, framework where they can uh, really engage with uh, uh, counterparts in uh, all over Europe, basically, and uh, establish uh, long-term uh, relationships. And that's very, very important for the uh, uh, single uh, market uh, here in, in Europe. Absolutely yes. essential, Andre. Okay, so uh, Daniel, uh, thank you very much for the time that uh, you have you. allocated you. to Cluj Innovation Days, our uh, annual conference. Uh, it has been a pleasure to, to have you here. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, uh, thank you for the contribution that you have had. My pleasure, Andre. So, um, uh, as you're very eager to read further publications, I'm now sending you the link to the uh, InnoSoup 1 Impact Study of 2020. This is probably not for our panelists because you know all this by heart, but maybe more for the audience in more general terms. I wanted to thank you very warmly, Andre, for, for having invited me and also thank uh, our speakers from InnoSoup 1. Uh, you should know that we are, of course, uh, are looking very closely to what's happening in your projects. Uh, and uh, as I said, I'm a big fan of InnoSoup 1 and uh, you know that this is really the absolute champions league of innovation support because we have a very low success rate. So uh, let me congratulate, congratulate you, by the way, of uh, being part of it. So Only good you. things happening, Daniel. Only good things. Okay. So many Thank thanks. You. And I have to leave you now. I'm really sorry. And uh, we keep in touch and uh, all the best to you. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, uh, let's uh, let's move on with uh, with our uh, discussion. Uh, some interesting uh, things that have been raised uh, by um, uh, Daniel, um, and I want to pick up on some some of the things that uh, Daniel has uh, mentioned. And uh, I have a question for uh, all of you. Uh, we often uh, talk about new value chain uh, creation, but this is in most cases very difficult to achieve, as we all know. Uh, how do you approach uh, strategically in your community this objective? And uh, once again, I propose we start with uh, Clemence. So, Clemence. Thank you, Andre. Um, yeah, uh, yes, uh, I think you're, you're right. Um, it's, it's difficult. Uh, 
um, we have observed uh, thanks to mainly thanks to our participation to uh, European project and InnoSub One project that um, SMEs are, are quite uh, constrained in their own sector and in their own territory. Uh, and they often have difficulties to look around to see what's going on, uh, to see if they could uh, get inspired by what's uh, done in other sectors and, uh, and uh, integrate this uh, methodology, this uh, uh, product uh, services, this, this solution to their own um, uh, uh, service to their own solution. Um, and indeed, uh, as I uh, told uh, you in introduction, InnoSub1 was a good way, is a good way uh, to give uh, this message to our community of SME, to say to them, look, uh, we have observed that uh, you are uh, working on that, which is very uh, a sector in uh, of importance and that we need you to continue on work on that. But uh, you could improve your solution by integrating other uh, technologies and together with other SMEs than the traditional uh, partners you have uh, in the maritime sector for what concerns Galatea, uh, in uh, south of France for, for what concerns uh, Polmer Mediterranée. Uh, so more globally, in, in Palmyra Mediterranean, we, we, we try to create this kind of opportunities for our members uh, to meet with other stakeholders uh, from a different value chain and for new value chains that we, uh, that, uh, we think uh, has to be uh, in, in ends. Um, and in, we, we really think that it's our role as a cluster to disseminate this uh, kind of knowledge uh, and to uh, share our network, uh, notably for SMEs that are, uh, uh, that, uh, are in their daily uh, life, their daily innovative activities, and, they, and that have difficulties to see a little bit further on how they could improve their self and improve the solutions that are developing. Um, and that's also why we are working closely uh, with other clusters, because uh, uh, thanks to uh, uh, the partnerships we have with other clusters, we are able to um, observe uh, what, is, what are the needs uh, and what are the uh, new uh, value chains that uh, we can uh, uh, try to work on it and try to uh, favor. To Clemence, um, and let's see if uh, Melanie can add something uh, to uh, uh, the approach, or maybe you have a completely different one than than the one described by uh, Clemence. So I would say that uh, Cap Digital, um, uh, as a cluster, we we play uh, we play a role of uh, of facilitator uh, that brings together all the players uh, to to make them work collectively. So. We, we do not create value chains, but we support actors that, uh, that create that value chain and, and want to innovate in the value chain. So we, we support uh, the emergence and the development of innovations that will have a positive impact in the creation of, of new value chain as, uh, as we do with the Digicirc project. Uh, through our three acceleration program we have in Digicirc, we, we target uh, SMEs uh, developing digital innovation for the circular economy. And the circular economy inherently generates uh, new value chains. It, it aims to change the paradigm from the linear uh, value chain of produce, use, dispose, to a circular one that turn, in, that turn waste into resources. So, first, we select solutions having potential to, to create new circular value change, and then we help them to, to analyze their value change. We give them access to funds, knowledge, and market expansion opportunities. So this is how we, we approach this, uh, this objective. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Melanie. Indeed, in your case, um, I think it's uh, absolutely logical uh, uh, what you do. Uh, and I have to say that I also embrace uh, personally uh, uh, the same approach, uh, let's say, uh, where we act as a platform for facilitation, for things uh, to happen 
uh, across our uh, community. Um, but also we act, uh, let's say, in, in a more proactive uh, way in the sense that we try to identify opportunities and bring them to the table uh, and uh, to the attention of our members of our community and uh, see what they can uh, we, they can do with these uh, opportunities. And um, cross-fertilization is always part of uh, our own strategy when we are uh, dealing with the, uh, especially with the IT industry that we are uh, otherwise representing. So we are moving now um, to uh, uh, Tade. Tade, please, if you want to uh, pick up uh, some of the ideas that have been launched by your uh, uh, fellow panelists. Thank you, Andre. Uh, well, I do agree that it's a very special approach. It's a very special topics uh, when talking about value change. So yeah, we just take a broader view of it and mention about the project HUFO, how we do in the project. Uh, because I do think it's a combination of either targeting some mm -hmm. needs or some solution needed. SME's uh, proposition. I think it's a kind of discussion that should emerge actually based on certain needs or certain uh, uh, fact that actually the, the industrials actually would need to enforce a certain problem, but also a certain SME that propose any things or new strategy to answer to or, or facilitate any kind of activities so i think it's the combination and the discussion between those two those two sides actually of the value chain so how we do how we did actually in the when all we are doing because we asked uh, we first internally uh, studied this emerging industry that i mentioned earlier so when we studied those value chains we targeted where actually the need technology could be used to those value chains so once we uh, evaluate each of the sector, we actually have to elaborate uh, papers, actually for internal for other SMEs uh, information. Also, then set in place as you mentioned, uh, Andre, uh, where we actually invited the SMEs to go talk and exchange with each other. Uh, all those industries we we targeted earlier. This is. I think it. To, to let the discussion go because uh, the value chain is uh, will include all kind of actors so we cannot have a view of it to let the um, innovative yeah. side of come so in UFO we organized four cross fertilization session in November 20 um, and then we organized a matchmaking event and as I mentioned uh, We'll also organize other matchmaking event in, uh, in June where we actually we will invite the SMEs to come and solve the solution for a certain problem with other kind of SMEs that actually would like to find the... So that's basically how I think we should we could actually approach this value chain question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in, uh, that's an uh, absolutely practical vision that you uh, you uh, uh, shared here uh, with us. And I've seen this, uh, obviously, in, in the UFO project. Um, and again, cross-fertilization is, is the key word, uh, I believe, here. We are trying, basically, to bring to the same uh, table actors or stakeholders from uh, different sectors uh, and putting their ideas and energy and resources together, uh, they can maybe uh, disrupt the way in uh, uh, in, in which they do business or they approach a uh, uh, market in general. So uh, for the next uh, uh, or the last part of the uh, our meeting or our conversation, um, I, I have some uh, for each of you. And uh, once again, I will uh, start with, uh, with Clemence. Uh, so, Paul de Mer is a, a leading organization in the European blue economy, as we as we know. Uh, how do you see the future of this sector in relation to the greening policy that the EU is putting forward? And uh, where are the opportunities and, and the challenges in, in this, this approach? Um, thanks, Andrei, for this question. Um... And indeed, the blue economy is very much related to the green policy and to the green deal that the EU wants to implement. Um, 
at the EU level and even at the world level, uh, blue economy has a huge potential. Economically, uh, there is a huge potential. Um, by the way, uh, yesterday at the European Maritime Days, uh, which is a maritime annual event of the European Commission's, Commission, um, uh, has been launched uh, the annual report about the potential of blue economy. So uh, please uh, uh, have a look at it if you are interested in, in this uh, question. Uh, and uh, thanks to the blue economy, we can create uh, many, many opportunities, many businesses, many jobs, uh, and uh, businesses can uh, uh, find some uh, way to, to grow. Um, so yes, we can exploit exploit our seas and oceans uh, for uh, to, to economically, but uh, what we have to take care of is to do it without dam damaging it. So that is uh, the actual the, the, the current challenge: how to take the best from our seas without uh, uh, while preserving it. Um, and it's actually uh, quite difficult to manage, but um, I, I think that uh, there is an uh, uh, interesting um, initiative and interesting solutions that uh, are uh, in that uh, direction. Uh, in Polmer, uh, Mediterranean, uh, we are working more specifically on six uh, strategic domains of the blue growth, maritime surveillance, ships and shipbuilding, marine renewable energies, fishing, aquaculture, and blue biotechnologies, ports and logistics, and Clemence, I think you muted uh, yourself. Uh, we still don't hear you, Clemence. Uh, I don't know what happened. If it was unintentional, maybe uh, it's, uh, it's a glitch uh, of the platform. If you can uh, please uh, step out and come back again meanwhile we will move on to melanie uh and i will uh, address her a question so cap digital is uh, one of the most prominent digital clusters in europe uh, with uh, hundreds uh, of uh, members uh, exceeding a thousand actually as far as i uh, understood uh, do you see that greening the european economy and society is a challenge or an opportunity for the sector I'm very curious to hear your answer because we are part of the same sector, the, uh, the IT. So I'm uh, very uh, curious to see how you how you see uh, all this. I would say, without surprise, I would say both. Uh, it's a challenge uh, because uh, we are here talking about a, a real paradigm paradigm shift. Well, you know, startups as uh, as a whole, and especially in the digital sector are very well known for, as for, for their fast shift capabilities. Yet, they, they still have to, to take the load from that shift. Uh, I'm talking about a, a huge effort on their product sourcing, design and distribution, as well as um, management and finance. So, but at the same time, this is also an opportunity um, because ICT is an emerging sector led by, uh, by a new generation of fearless entrepreneurs with a, a deep understanding of the, of the matter. And in Cap Digital, uh, we, we, be we believe in digital technologies to positively impact and support the, the ecological uh, transition. Uh, so that's why uh, through our project or initiatives, we aim to, to connect actors with technological solutions so much so that if that technology is used in a proper way, that will surely address the need of communities or, or, big, commun or big companies that are looking for reducing their environmental impact. So, Digital technologies to, to support the ecological transition uh, is, is that's the way as it opens a new market for the for the digital actors. Uh, 
Okay, uh, I think we share the vision here, um, Melanie. Uh, we also see uh, basically uh, the, the same um, on our side. There is also a lot of opportunity, but also challenges that we, we have to face. Um, it's very um, you know common these days to um, uh, say that uh, digital, or digital transformation is the solution to everything, but we know that this is not the case. It's not the case. And uh, we have to be very careful how we promote this uh, because uh, we know that um, digital technologies, they have an impact on the environment and um, we have to mitigate this. Okay, so Clemence is back. Uh, let's see if her uh, microphone is working now. Clemence? Yes, can you yes. hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly, okay, very great. good. So uh, here you go, you have the chance to- uh, Yes, to sorry work. about uh, this interruption. Um, no yeah, so I was uh, saying that in our six uh, strategic domains that we are working on in Blue Gross, um, we are uh, uh, trying to take into account uh, the uh, greening aspect uh, and to make sure that uh, this uh, uh, is, um, is uh, something that uh, our members have in mind while they are developing their project. And that's why we have uh, developed a transversal action, uh, which is the ecological transition. And this is an aspect also that uh, is taken into account in our uh, in all of our action and initiative, uh, such as in Galatea. Uh, in Galatea, uh, we are asking to the project that we are funding to uh, show that they will have a, a, a positive impact uh, uh, on their company, uh, but also on uh, on the environment. Uh, so it's uh, for us, it's very important to uh, promote uh, this. And even if it's not easy uh, for SMEs uh, to integrate this in their uh, in their daily life uh, as a company and uh, in the solutions that they are developing. Uh, that is something they need uh, to start uh, taking into account, especially that, as you just mentioned, um, even if uh, digitalization is also something they are more and more integrating in their, in their uh, business life, uh, that, that I have to keep in mind that uh, the, the integration of digital technologies can have a, a negative impact uh, uh, and that is uh, uh, difficult to balance with the uh, environmental impact that we we want to uh, in positive impact we want to to uh, promote. Okay, thank you, Clemence. The good thing about uh, the digital technologies is that uh, they uh, allow us uh, for a very precise measurement uh, yes. if, if we want to do this, yeah, and exactly. uh, hopefully we will want to do this more and more. And um, it will give us a clearer picture of uh, how we impact uh, with everything that we do, uh, the environment and the climate. And then uh, when we know this, then uh, we can uh, plan to, to change uh, that kind of impact that we are generating. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's great that they are also uh, uh, leading to a mutualization of a lot of uh, uh, things. And uh, that is also going in the right direction, I think. Yes, indeed. And uh, uh, what personally I've been advocate, advocating for uh, quite some uh, uh, time a uh, while is uh, access to data. I think that's very important uh, uh, in this uh, equation. So uh, the more data is available, I think the more we know and we uh, start to think what we can do about changing the way uh, we uh, behave in general towards uh, the climate and, and environment. And I think that's that's one of the key issues that will have to be addressed uh, in, in the near future. So uh, now I'm moving on to, to Tade. I have uh, I have a question for you, Tade, as well. Uh, Aerospace Valley represents uh, the European uh, reference point in terms of uh, aeronautics, as, as we all know. Uh, but we also know that uh, aeronautics is not just about flying planes, as you know, uh, the immediate uh, thought uh, comes to uh, many people. What are some of the practical applications or technologies um, from this sector that you see more and more present uh, in our lives or in the, in the near future? Thank you, Andre. Uh, 
Thank you very much. I think you made a nice uh, transition to the topic here. Uh, I met the major, a major point actually in the, in the uh, innovation for the analytics sector. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm maybe not the best one today to maybe offer you a complete and overview of the technology for the aeronautics sector. Uh, the you use the space space. sector. So what I will probably the similar question can you adapt it to the space sector. Uh, but for us medical provision also to the aeronautics sector because I am um, aware in our space valley that's a uh, there's actually interest and a very serious will uh, of the entrepreneurs to focus and to work specific topic in the aerotic sector as, as I introduced to you it is uh, the light and carbon free aviation uh, this purpose is very new we, want, we will actually continue to use uh, the plane to travel and we want to do it for well of course after the covid uh, so probably soon but it is a need that we want to adapt that we should adapt actually to the reality of so in this regard, the Aerospace Valley tried to contribute to, and they launched in November 25, uh, 2020, uh, the MILE initiative. So this initiative actually aims to regional companies, mostly SMEs, as well as manufacturers or laboratories or research platform together. And the MILE initiative actually want to encourage all the actors to exchange information with each other, they want to foster any kind of collaboration, and they want to federate these actors to bring out the project that are related actually to the light and carbon-free aviation. So, as this is a very clear topic for the aeronautics sector, uh, perspective that acknowledging for the space sector with a very strong transformation of the sector. Uh, it is a transformation that is faster thanks to the miniaturization of the, the technologies, also the, the need to understand the, or to collect the data, as you mentioned earlier before, to a certain new innovative way of uh, supporting the innovation with what we call the public and private partnerships. The I think that this is a very innovative way. And, uh, uh, innovation with the public private partnership can be inserted to the Innosu project here, Innosu Pond project. Thank you. Yes, I think it is. It's a very good example of uh, public private uh, partnership, uh, what we are uh, doing all here in, in Innosu uh, project. Uh, and uh, yes, yesterday in our uh, conference, we had a, a whole session dedicated to, uh, to this. Uh, um, I, concept or uh, to this topic of uh, private uh, public partnership and uh, how this relates to innovation it was a very interesting uh, uh, one as well um, so for the last uh, uh, nine or so minutes that that we still have in our uh, uh, panel uh, I have a question uh, for you this is more like a personal view that I would like to extract from you um, and um, uh, it goes like this uh, if you were to change for the better, one thing related to the functioning of the European economy, what would it be? Uh, and this time I, I would propose to change a little bit the order. So uh, uh, if you want, Melanie, to, to start uh, uh, with your answer. Um, so this is a, a personal point of view. Um, maybe if I had one thing to change for the better, it will be, how would you say, two stop having a, a short-term vision. Um, we are still responding to, to an emergency and we have difficulties to invest uh, massively and sustainably in, in sectors. And there has been a, a lot of improvement over the last year on that challenge, as we can see with, uh, with the Green Deal. And there is a, a growing awareness from European leaders on that matter. But uh, I think we can do better in foreseeing all the changes uh, we are facing. Um, I would also say that the drawback of, of the vision is that uh, we can also meet the reality of the, of the demand as, uh, that can change uh, very quickly. The, um, indeed, Melanie, uh, I think you, you touched upon a very good point uh, here. Uh, the short-term vision 
and uh, that we mostly react instead of uh, thinking strategically ahead. And that's uh, that's an important point that you that you made. Uh, Clemence, what is your uh, take on this? Um, I will. Um, well, for me, uh, innovation is a, a key element uh, to make sure that the European Union stay uh, stays resilient, uh, and that is something that we have uh, experienced uh, 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 thanks to the well because of the uh, uh, current crisis. Uh, and I think that I would say that support uh, toward uh, innovation for SMEs is something that is um, a little bit missing in the European Commission uh, policy, or not missing, but is uh, uh, something uh, that needs to be improved. Um, the EU is giving a huge amount uh, of money for innovation, and that's uh, something uh, great and we need that uh, to uh, improve uh, all together uh, but we need more mechanism uh, in which uh, SMEs uh, could be easily or more easily involved um, and uh, uh, and could uh, more uh, easily cooperate with other type of factors such as large companies or research centers uh, in big research uh, and innovation projects. Um, I would add that um, uh, we need also to say to the European Commission that uh, they can rely on organizations uh, such as uh, clusters, uh, that because we have this knowledge of uh, the SMEs and we have this proximity, which uh, I think is quite important for the SMEs. Uh, they know they can uh, call us and talk to us easily, and uh, we can support them uh, in the, their development. And that is something uh, that is not needed from other type of organizations that are, are bigger or less needed. Uh, so um, yes, I, I think we 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 could really help uh, on that, uh, and we could be uh, we could help the European Commission on that. Uh, for SMEs, uh, and uh, InnoSup1 uh, is uh, something that uh, of this kind, and I, I really hope that the new mechanism uh, that uh, Mr. Gassman uh, um, told us about uh, in uh, his uh, uh, speech uh, will uh, help us also uh, to go uh, towards, uh, towards this and to help SMEs to access to EU funding for their innovative uh, projects. Absolutely true, uh, Clemence. And um, you saw that I pushed this uh, on the agenda yes. of uh, Daniel uh, very much. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I agree uh, totally with what you, you said. Um, and um, it's not just we are clusters and we are represented here, but uh, we saw this uh, real life. I mean, we saw that uh, small companies have absolutely no chance uh, in accessing uh, innovation services or uh, finding, uh, uh, let's say, uh, research partners uh, without uh, the, the help of uh, some intermediaries, such as uh, the cluster organizations. And I absolutely agree that we need to perpetuate somehow this model uh, across uh, Europe uh, during the Horizon Europe uh, program. There are $95 billion. And uh, we had Maria Gabriel uh, earlier this uh, day in our conference, and uh, she was praising the program and uh, all the benefits that it will bring. But we have to make sure that uh, it will trigger down also to uh, to SMEs as well. So uh, Tade, let, let's see uh, how do you see uh, things then. Thank you, Andre. Uh, it is actually very interesting to hear your, your discussion here and the suggestion, uh, Bethany and Clemence. It's very interesting that uh, the will to together is a uh, is, is still uh, very uh, important because from a, from a kind of a, to view, uh, I do not leave this European economy for kind of a long time. Actually, I just leave it for a short time since 2014. So, I'm not sure how be able to to develop how how it could be interesting. Uh, actually, I think it goes in the right direction if we see the evolution from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe with a bigger budget, with a more uh, united. Interesting, and I think it goes important to point out what should be made better 
uh, but from my perspective right now, I think it goes in the right direction. So this kind of discussion should definitely continue where we could target this. Um, so we compare this, the European Union in general to something that I can more compare to, which is uh, Canada. So if we compare actually the Canada, so if we can compare federal state to uh, the different European countries, the solution I would say to the European organization is to establish what we call a fiscal equation system. Uh, it's a per equation system. Uh, I think if I compare to Canada to make it more, because I think that if you want to make a more and more deepen European, uh, you should have actually a, a more unified Europe. And this kind of fiscal system would actually just foster contribute to the differences between the countries. So it is interesting to see the discussion you're having here because targeting those needs is something in Europe in general, uh, but, but also from a bit outside point to system that we use in federal states, well, maybe you in Europe think about this. So I don't know how this could be uh, set in place that it's kind of very, but um, yes, I have to say that is a very progressive, let's say, uh, uh, approach. Uh, integration in terms of uh, fiscality, especially, is uh, still seen in Europe as a, uh, interference with the sovereignty of uh, of the EU member states. And I think each state, EU member state, wants to preserve this right to uh, regulate from a fiscal point of view uh, the the economy. Uh, I think we still have to uh, wait for, for uh, better integration, uh, but nevertheless, until then, we can do many, many other things. And um, uh, I also like this uh, idea that uh, Daniel uh, has mentioned in, in his uh, uh, presentation or discussion about uh, networking and facilitating the uh, uh, B2B or the business relationships uh, within the EU market. I think that's one area where uh, the European Commission and the European Union in general should push more uh, to uh, uh, help uh, companies to get in contact, to understand what they are doing, uh, to uh, make business possible, uh, basically. So uh, we are uh, uh, very close to, uh, to uh, closing our uh, panel discussion. Uh, if you uh, want to have a final thought maybe before uh, uh, we, we go. Okay, uh, if not, then uh, I, I uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your presence. It was a very interesting discussion for myself as well. Uh, a good uh, occasion for a reflection upon my own uh, thoughts, let's say, uh, and my own uh, um, uh, thinking. Um, thank you once again for uh, being present uh, in uh, Cluj Innovation Days, the annual uh, uh, flagship conference that we uh, organize, uh, uh, Cluj IT. And uh, I wish you all the best. Have a nice uh, afternoon and uh, see you maybe next year. is part of the Future Skills lifelong learning program. The project is co-financed from the European Social Fund through the Human Capital Operational Program 2014-2020.